Yo, 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 what's the deal? What's the deal? It's your boy, who's in the, and we back talking sports. <clears throat> Today, we're going to do a surprise video. YouTube is the new home of NFL Sunday Ticket. Watch all your favorite NFL teams out of market Sunday afternoon. There have been many dominant big men throughout. Yeah. We're going to do George um, Mikan. This will be my first time reacting to anything really about George Mikan. But I do know you won five championships with the Minneapolis Lakers before they moved to Los Angeles. Shout out, big bro, to Raw. He always talk about this dude or whatever like that. I knew who – I knew the name, but I didn't – know too much about George Mikan, but you know, on this channel, we love to learn about the older generation. You feel me? I'm a young, I'm a young OG. You ain't know I'm a young OG, bro. I'm not like these young cats. You feel me? These days that disrespect the older generation of the NBA because my NBA is old now. I like the 2000s NBA. My NBA is old now, so I can never do that. And I, and I don't really care for the NBA now like that. You know what I'm saying? It's cool, but it ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely not the best era. Definitely not. So we going to see how good was George Mikey really. You know what I'm saying? And then we going to, you know what I'm saying, say our thoughts. Throughout the years, but one player specifically paved the way for the rest of them. Not only was he the first NBA player to lead his team to a three-peat, but he's often recognized as the first superstar of NBA history. George Lawrence Mikan Jr., the Laker legend whose legacy is worth far more than it's acknowledged for. But just how good was George Mikan really? When we break down his era, his skills, achievements, and talent, where does he rank among the greatest centers to ever play the game? Today, I'll try my best to answer that, and we'll start as we always do, by taking it back to the beginning of his career. George Mikan began his professional basketball career when he signed with the Chicago American Gears in 1946. The 6'10 center quickly became the best player on the team, and poured in 16.5 points per game over the course of his rookie season. Especially for his era, he was an incredibly skilled big man who had a strong element of finesse to his game. Not only did he quickly establish himself as one of the league's elite scorers, rebounders, and shot blockers, but he was extremely difficult to defend overall. Not just because of his size, but Mikan was well equipped with an ambidextrous hook shot. In that rookie season, Mikan led his gears to the World Basketball Tournament, where he was eventually named the league's MVP. At the end of his rookie campaign, the owner of the American Gears decided to withdraw his team from the NBL with the intent of creating his own league, which would be known as the Professional Basketball League of America, or PBLA for short. Unfortunately, the league folded after just one month, which meant that Mike and all of his teammates randomly had to be distributed to the other 11 remaining teams in the NBL. As a result, <coughs> Mike ended up on the Minneapolis Lakers. It's amazing how these things always seem to work out for the Lakers. In his first season with the Lakers, Mikan averaged 21.3 points per game as he led all players in scoring, was named the league MVP, and won the NBL title. The very next season, Mikan led the league in scoring again and put up a remarkable 28.3 points per game on 41.6% shooting. That shooting percentage has led many younger basketball fans to criticize his efficiency. But context is needed for that field goal percentage. In the early years of basketball, players were still developing fundamentally sound jump shots. And some have even speculated that the older and poor quality basketballs contributed to the lower percentages. Whether that's true or not, I'm not so sure. But I do know this. In the 1948-49 season, the league average field goal percentage was 32.7%. When Mikan scored his... <clears throat> Thank you. I'm so glad he did this, bro. Y'all stat sniffers, y'all stat chuckers who love to talk about efficiency. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that love. One one great thing is like the uh, field goal percentage. Y'all love to see, oh, he shot uh, uh, 43% from the field. He was terrible without 
giving context to his era. Each era shot shot a different percentage. Each era average had a different percentage. This era's average versus a a, a player from the two thousands. Of course, a player from the two thousands is going to look way less inefficient in this era. But back in the two thousands, the uh, <clears throat> the field goal percentage was lower because the pace was slower because the defense was tougher. So I'm glad that he said that. You feel me? And explain the field goal percentage and the context around it. It's 28.3 points per game on 41.6% shooting. Believe it or not, his 41.6% was actually the second best field goal percentage in the entire league that season. Here's something else to consider. Mikan averaged 28.3 points per game at a time where teams were averaging only 80 points per game. If you adjust that ratio to this modern era, then that would translate to nearly 40 points per game. When Mikan was dominating his era, he was easily the best scorer, he was arguably the most efficient player, he was possibly the greatest rebounder, and he was almost certainly the game's best shot blocker as well. Over the course of the 1949 playoffs, he averaged 30.3 points on 45.9% shooting and 80.2% shooting from the free throw line, and it comes as no surprise that his Lakers won the championship yet again. This was only the beginning of his reign though, as Mike and the Lakers won the championship in 1950 and then won another three straight titles from 1952 to 1954. The reason why the NBA only acknowledges some of his stats and championships is because of the different leagues he played in during his early career, from the NBL, the BAA, and eventually the NBA. But the truth is, if you account for each league he played in, then George Mikan won a ridiculous seven championships in his first eight seasons as a professional basketball player. And if the finals MVP had existed during that era, he certainly would have won all seven of those as well. That kind of winning dominance from a big man has never... That's what you call a dominance. But you know, younger fans going to be like, man, it was only five teams. Man, he was playing against plumbers and playing... It does not matter, bro. This is the fucking history of the NBA. It don't matter. That was what started it. If they never started it, we wouldn't have no NBA today, bro. These are the pioneers of the game, bro. So why are we disrespecting them, bro? <clears throat> That's why I can't rock with that. That's why... Like, when I was growing up, bro, I grew up with people that was way older than me that taught me about basketball and stuff like that. If you don't know, I watched basketball and football with my mom. You feel me? Especially football. But, you know what I'm saying? I took a love into basketball, you feel me, from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? And people like this are shitted upon because they're trying to basically – uh how can I put this? Compare, they like to compare the stats from then or field goal percentage from then to now. You cannot do that. This is a different era. Players are, the game has got way different, way better, and the players have gotten way better from the fucking 40s and 50s. But that was the foundation, bro. He was shooting 45% in the 40s and 50s, and that would be a, a pretty good percentage now. So, come on, bro. Never been matched by anyone other than the great Bill Russell. Mikan was so dominant that he was instrumental in inspiring numerous rules for the NBA, including the goaltending rule, the widening of the three-second violation lane from 6 feet to 12 feet, and he's even credited as the player who inspired the invention of the shot clock. The biggest example of that inspiration came on November 22nd, 1950 when Mikan's Lakers had a 29-game home winning streak heading into that evening. The Fort Wayne Pistons were determined to end that streak by any means necessary, so when the game started, the Pistons played a game of keep away whenever they had possession of the ball. This not only disrupted Mikan's dominant offense, but it also resulted in the lowest scoring game in NBA history, where the Pistons snapped the Lakers' streak in a final score of 19-18. George Mikan tried to carry his Lakers as he scored 15 of the Lakers' 18 points, including all four of his team's field goals. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough, and just a few years later, the 24-second shot clock was introduced to the NBA. All in all, he was the leader of one of the greatest yet forgotten... So you really should thank him. 
be the reason the 24 second clock shot clock is invented. <clears throat> I'm glad I did this video. I'm Dynasties of League History. He was a seven time champion, won six consecutive scoring titles, won at least two rebounding titles since rebounds were not tracked until halfway through his career, and he made six All NBA slash BAA teams. Despite a full legacy, Mikan only played until the age of 31, and continuous injuries and numerous broken bones resulted in him retiring earlier than most. The man was known as Mr. Basketball and was not only influential in the progress of the league, but he also inspired many that came after him, like the all-time great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who said he showed everyone that a true big man could develop the agility and skills needed to play basketball. Mike and quickly opened their minds. Now would his game translate to the modern NBA? I'm not so sure, and if I'm being honest, I don't necessarily think that's a fair comparison to make, considering how the league he played in had so many disadvantages, from the training methods, to the equipment, technology, and even the lack of training resources compared to the modern NBA players. Mikan certainly had the size and athleticism of a modern big, and he definitely dominated his era just about as much as he possibly could have. If we simply adopt the logic that you can only beat who's in front of you, then Mikan is without question one of the greatest centers of all time, one of the greatest Lakers of all time, and certainly one of the greatest basketball players to ever live. Let me know in the comments section where you rank George Mikan among the greatest players of all time. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball. This is dominance, and there's no way LeBron could be over him even if he won the championship. Because like my boy Two Raw said, if y'all gonna count them five championships that he won towards the Lakers 17, then you gotta count him as a great Laker. You can't put LeBron over him. LeBron ain't won no five championships. He didn't win six, you feel me, uh five championships. He didn't uh <clears throat> win uh MVP as many times as he did. And then he basically was playing before it was the NBA and then into the NBA, you know what I'm saying? He changed the he changed the game. He changed the rules. The rules was invented because of him. So there's no way we can't not, you know what I'm saying, talk about basketball without or talk about the Lakers without him. This makes Shannon Sharp look even more ridiculous. So I hope people that's my age, younger, of course a, a lot of people that's older than me you know what I'm saying? Might know, probably know who he is and everything like that. But I hope people my age, younger than me, watch this video and see that, bro. Watch for yourself, bro. Don't stop listening to everybody's opinions on who was good and who wasn't. Go watch for yourself, because that's what I do. This has been Who Is Hendo, man. I'm out. Peace.